One of our personal favorite ancient sites is the ancient fortress of Sacsayhuaman. We believe this site was built an unimaginably long time ago, yet it would still be a daunting proposition for any invading party. One of the most impressive features of the site, and the reason why it is ranked as one of our favorites, is the inexplicably baffling stonework that makes up the fortress's maze of outer walls. Created without the use of mortar and encompassing some of the most astonishing ancient stonework we feel to be found anywhere on Earth. Although many other sites within Peru undoubtedly contain incredibly precise stonework, Sacsayhuaman is the jewel in the crown when it comes to the evidence for a lost advanced civilization. The largest stones in this boundary being 28 feet high. Regularly academically estimated to weigh over 120 tons, with more enthusiastic estimates placing the largest stones at around the 300 to 400 ton mark. Located on the outskirts of the ancient Inca capital of Cusco, it rests on an enormous artificially leveled plateau. It consists of three outer barriers, gargantuan walls, 1,500 feet long and 54 feet wide created in a strategic zigzag shape. They surround a paved area containing a mysterious circular structure. As recently mentioned in another video, there is overwhelming evidence to suggest two phases of building was undertaken at certain sites within Peru. We feel that the constructors of Sacsayhuaman are the same people who indeed built most of ancient Peru. This group were the ones who utilized the enigmatic protuberances even found upon the casing stones on the Great Pyramids. However, interestingly, there was another, later phase, and although not as complex, still far more advanced than any academically studied ancestor who are currently claimed as the actual builders. This means that more than one ancient civilization must have called ancient Peru home. A later group re-inhabiting these sites, flourishing to a point where they were clearly inspired by the site's original builders, becoming highly capable stone builders themselves. How old is Sacsayhuaman? Who could have possibly built it? And why did they not utilize the mysterious protuberances found on much of their other stonework throughout Peru? It is, undoubtedly, one of the most incredible ancient sites still standing on our planet. And thanks to the incredible capabilities of its builders, it will remain standing for many more years to come. It is a site filled with inexplicable features, which we find incredibly compelling. Since the rediscovery of what is unquestionably the most puzzling, astounding, and enigmatic site on Earth, the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx of Giza, we have been led to believe that what could be described as an astonishingly accurate yet somewhat vandalistic later edition was once put there by a caliph named Al-Mamun. Now popularly known by its coined title, Al-Mamun's Forced Entrance, this title, although argued as his work, has a pretty compelling tale attached to its possible original purpose. When one actually looks into what an incredible achievement this tunnel once was, it becomes apparent that it was cleverly bored by an ancient people, far more advanced than a 9th century caliph. Additionally, possible hypotheses have been put forth as to its origins by individuals who may have known of entrances into the pyramid. We in the modern world have either lost knowledge of or have been prevented from knowing about their existence. Hinged doorways made of stone perfectly counterbalanced to allow an average-sized man to open and close them. Doorways along the structure's north face that, when closed, become seemingly indistinguishable from its surroundings. Are there still secret entrances along the pyramid's northern side? Quote, the Great Pyramid, a little way up on one side, has a stone that may be taken out, which being raised up, there is a sloping passage to the foundations. End quote. Written by Strabo in Pyramids and Temples of Giza, Flinders Petri. Yet regardless of these additional, highly compelling investigative leads put forward in addition to an explanation for the tunnel's existence, 
its remarkable accuracy remains a tough thing for supporters of academia's tale of events to explain. As author Ralph Ellis puts it, quote, The main problem with the classical explanation was that Mammon's tunnel is rather too accurate for comfort. It tracks into the pyramid in a direct line for the all-important junction between the descending and ascending passageways. It is often cited that Mammon had to turn the tunnel sharp left to discover the original passageways, a fact that Ralph had in the back of his mind when they first visited the Great Pyramid. But he ambled down the forced tunnel, rather mystified, because the left turn cited in the literature could not be found. Having backtracked the tunnel and to try again, that left turn seemed to be no more than a slight widening of the tunnel. In fact, the digging was almost right on target." End quote. For how does one know where one is when deep within the passages of such an incredibly huge ancient structure? Secondly, if instead argued as having been started from without, the same problem has to be solved. For how did one know how to create the initial angle? Although it is now the most used entrance and although it has been drawn upon countless plans, to draw an existing tunnel's precise line of descent is far more easier than to have created said precise angle in the first place. And within the Great Pyramid is the remaining half of what has often been used to create a compelling, possible explanation for this tunnel's original purpose. Known as the sarcophagus of Khufu, an anomalous object found within the pyramid, an artifact we have covered in the past. No one can explain how this giant stone object came to be within the pyramid. It would not have fit through the existing entrance tunnels. However, at some time in the pyramid's life, someone smashed into this stone box, took its past contents and the sarcophagus lid, an object that would also have not fit round the turns of the existing tunnel system, yet would have fit through the force tunnel and due to the vandalistic nature of the tunnel itself, could be argued that this damage to the sarcophagi was inflicted by the same group of individuals who built the tunnel, one used to extract the so-called sarcophagus's lid. Is this the real past purpose of the tunnel? And if created by a caliph in the 9th century, how did he tunnel so accurately on target? And additionally, where is this lid now? Was this tunnel, like the many different layers of casing stones indicate, built by a later yet also lost civilization, one who flourished far before even the ancient Egyptians? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. One of our personal favorite ancient sites is the ancient fortress of Sacsayhuaman. We believe this site was built an unimaginably long time ago. Yet it would still be a daunting proposition for any invading party. One of the most impressive features of the site, and the reason why it is ranked as one of our favorites, is the inexplicably baffling stonework that makes up the fortress's maze of outer walls. Created without the use of mortar and encompassing some of the most astonishing ancient stonework we feel to be found anywhere on Earth. Although many other sites within Peru, undoubtedly contain incredibly precise stonework. Sacsayhuaman is the jewel in the crown when it comes to the evidence for a lost advanced civilization. The largest stones in this boundary being 28 feet high, regularly academically estimated to weigh over 120 tons, with more enthusiastic estimates placing the largest stones at around the 300 to 400 ton mark. Located on the outskirts of the ancient Inca capital of Cusco, it rests on an enormous artificially leveled plateau. It consists of three outer barriers, gargantuan walls, 1,500 feet long and 54 feet wide, created in a strategic zigzag shape. They surround a paved area containing a mysterious circular structure. As recently mentioned in another video, there is overwhelming evidence to suggest two phases of building was undertaken at certain sites within Peru. We feel that the constructors of Sacsayhuaman are the same people who indeed built most of ancient Peru. 
This group were the ones who utilized the enigmatic protuberances even found upon the casing stones on the Great Pyramids. However, interestingly, there was another, later phase, and although not as complex, still far more advanced than any academically studied ancestor who are currently claimed as the actual builders. This means that more than one ancient civilization must have called ancient Peru home. A later group re-inhabiting these sites, flourishing to a point where they were clearly inspired by the site's original builders, becoming highly capable stone builders themselves. How old is Sacsayhuaman? Who could have possibly built it? And why did they not utilize the mysterious protuberances found on much of their other stonework throughout Peru? It is, undoubtedly, one of the most incredible ancient sites still standing on our planet. And thanks to the incredible capabilities of its builders, it will remain standing for many more years to come. It is a site filled with inexplicable features, which we find incredibly compelling. On a number of occasions, we have covered the unexplainable remnants left by a civilization which once undoubtedly flourished here upon this planet. A true mysterious history. The most notable and presumably the evidence which will remain upon our Earth for the longest being the unimaginably enormous megalithic structures which rest in many areas of Earth. These structures built using stones so large, we cannot explain how they were moved. The quarry known as Yang Shan is such an impressive example of this lost knowledge and or technique for moving these stones, we felt it deserved an in-depth discussion. What is special about Yang Shan is the fact that it was seemingly abandoned, quite possibly due to cataclysm. In the midst of actually cutting some of the largest stone megaliths ever found on Earth, revealing in all its glory just how these stones were indeed detached from the Earth's bedrock, a question which had also remained unanswered for many years. Yang Shan also reveals invaluable clues to how they could have been moved. The star of the show, an enormous steel weighing 16,250 metric tons, disputed to have been cut during the reign of the Yongkou Emperor, the third ruler of the Ming Dynasty in China, reigning from 1402 to 1424. However, although academia is seemingly willing to approach such subjects with an air of arrogance, often due to its in-depth accurate understanding of said era, it inevitably becomes unstuck once one begins to explore their knowledge or indeed explanation of how these enormous stones were intended to be moved. Academia's illogical explanation of the site is as follows. In 1405, the Yongle Emperor ordered the cutting of a giant statue in this quarry, for use in the Ming Xiaoling Mausoleum in dedication of his deceased father. Three separate pieces were being cut, the rectangular base, the body, and the head. After most of the stone cutting work had been done, the architects conveniently realized that moving stones from the quarry to Ming Xiaoling and installing them there would not be physically possible. The body weighed 8,799 tons, and the steel's apparent head weighed 6,118 tons. According to quote, experts, it would have stood 73 meters tall. A supposed legend attached to this possible fallacy has it that workers who fail to produce the daily quota of crushed rock of at least 33 shang would be executed on the spot. But is this the real story of Yang Shan Quarry? Or could there possibly be a more interesting history attached to this site, and indeed its accompanying stones? Within Baalbek, one of the countless examples found around the world, there are stones well over a thousand tons in weight, which seem to have been effortlessly placed atop one another, using technologies or methods unexplained by these so-called experts. Is it really that unthinkable to believe that they could indeed once shift these enormous stones found in Yangshan? Not only move them, but lift them on top of one another? Fortunately, more and more people are beginning to look at this exact possibility. And with the mounting evidence in support of far greater antiquity surfacing every day, 
It is only a matter of time before these sites are truly revealed for what they actually once were. We recently shared some compelling evidence suggesting that a number of megalithic sites dotted all around the world are far older than the civilizations claimed as the builders. It seems that as modern academia has gained a stranglehold on the education of mankind, it has willfully ignored, and in some cases suppressed, the truth regarding many unexplained ancient ruins found all over Earth. The pregnant woman of Baalbek, for example, a megalithic stone many attribute as the largest ever man-moved stone, and although many stones slightly lighter can be found effortlessly placed within ancient structures everywhere. Academia stresses that it couldn't be moved any further. The same can be seen with Yangshan Quarry in China, home to the largest known cut megalith in the world. Again, academia suggests that this stone was abandoned due to its size, completely ignoring the enigmatic notches indicating that the entire shape of these enormous rocks had actually been carved prior to their attempted liberation from the bedrock. They insisted that it was abandoned suddenly, not due to unknown circumstances, but due to them not able to move them. And although the ancient Egyptians, and better known, seagoing Romans themselves, claimed ownership to many of these perplexing structures, and clearly displaying a severe level of erosion, there are some sites coming to light which have seemingly been left to the eons, never again being claimed as another's work. Deep within the southern wildernesses of Siberia lies the mountain of Shoria. Rarely visited by humans, and even less frequently studied, this remote mountain, however, was a few years ago discovered to be the home of something astonishing. Now known as the Gornaya Shoria megaliths, their truly astonishing enormity has made it hard for certain fields of study to even give this place a second glance, and although some of the structure now revealed to the world through photographs clearly shows that these remarkable stone walls have indeed an artificial origin, the few funded individuals who have looked at the site have still somehow had the audacity to claim that it is nothing more than a geological formation. Made with stone bricks many times larger than the stone of the pregnant woman, and with them reaching high up into the heavens far above the tree lines, one has to wonder who could have built this cyclopean wall? When did they build it? How did they build it? Where did such enormous stones come from? With such enormous structural blocks, it is no surprise that this mind-boggling structure has survived the tests of time. A remarkable location, one which needs serious archaeological explorations in search of remains, so we may one day ascertain the true builders of this amazing place.